Now that we've covered the theory of the splatting material, let's take a look at the result of what we'll be creating. Each one of these puddles was created by using a combination of the techniques we used in the previous module. By combining the addition and multiplication of UVs, as well as random number generation, we can procedurally place each one of these puddles without having to manually create a texture. Let's start creating this. And first we're going to begin by sourcing some textures to use for our splatting material. For this tutorial, I've used some public domain textures that are available on opengameart.org, which is a website that hosts content that is in the public domain and is free to use in your own projects. Each item comes with its own type of license associated with it, so make sure that you're able to use that content that you download from the site before using it in your own projects. This particular download is from the author Duion, and this texture is completely free to use and modify according to its license. It's actually designed as a blood splatter texture, but we're going to repurpose it to turn it into a water puddle. So I'm going to download this and place it in a folder I've created for it. I'll extract this, and inside the content folder is eight textures. In this project, we'll be using both the Blood Splatter 01 PNG and the Blood Splatter Base 01 PNG. Going back to Unreal Engine, I'm going to navigate to the Content Textures folder and hit the Import button. Then I'll go to that folder where I save the textures and highlight them and hit Open to import them into Unreal as assets. Double clicking the asset opens up the texture asset window, which allows us to see various properties about the texture and change some settings, which affect how it's used in Unreal. Now we can see the same info for the other texture. Let's start a new level for making this material by going to the file menu and choosing new level. I'll choose the default template as it gives us a basic floor to work with, as well as a sky sphere and some lights. And let's create a material in the content browser and name it Texture Splat. And we'll put an M underscore prefix to make it easy to see that this asset is a material, and that's a good naming convention to adhere to. I'll double click to open up the material editor, close the stats window to make some more space, and I want to drag the details panel up to the top. And switch the preview mesh to a plane, and go to a left orthographic view. And finally, switch to unlit mode. This gives us a nice simple preview window to see how our material will work. And I'll just make this window a bit bigger so it's easier to see. Now we can start to make this material. I'm going to right click to bring up the node menu and create a texture sample node. In the details panel for the texture slot, I'll click on the drop down browser and start typing in the name of the texture to filter out other textures. And there it is. If we hook this texture directly into the base color slot, we'll see all these strange looking artifacts surrounding the texture. And this is where the alpha is zero and there should be no color. To remove that for now, we can use the alpha information to interpolate between black, which is a constant of zero, and the texture color channels. So I'll create a constant node by holding one on the keyboard and clicking on the canvas, and create a lerp node by holding L on the keyboard and clicking as well. Hook up the zero value to the A slot and the texture to the B slot then the alpha slot of the texture to the alpha input of the lerp to blend between them, and then plug the result into the color slot of the main material, and we should see the texture looking better now. Now we can start manipulating UVs. We'll start with the default texture coordinate node. And of course, if we plug that into our texture, we'll see no change. Now we're gonna do some simple tiling like we saw in the last module. So create a multiply node, which is the M hotkey, and a constant, which is the one hotkey. I'm going to turn this constant into a parameter by right clicking and choosing convert to parameter. This will make this show up as a control when using this material as a material instance and allow us to control its range and default value. I'll call it number of tiles to mean how many times this texture will repeat in the horizontal and vertical directions. I'll give it a default value of four and then hook it up to the multiply. And if we open up the node preview, we can see that the UV values themselves have been multiplied by four because they're four times brighter. So let's use these multiplied UVs and plug them into our texture UV input. And we see the tiling UVs now. I'm gonna select these nodes and move them over to make a bit of space. 
because now we're going to get each repeated tile and get a unique whole integer value for that whole subregion. We do that with a floor node. This gives the values from 0 to 3 in the u and v directions, but in whole integer increments. I'll now create a subtract node, and this is going to allow us to take the multiplied uvs, and subtract the flawed uvs to get new uvs, that instead of going from 0 to 4, they repeat in the 0 to 1 range in each subregion. At this point, plugging them into the texture doesn't give us anything obviously new, due to the fact that the sampling mode being set to wrap causes the texture to still sample with repetitions. Now we are explicitly sampling in the 0 to 1 range with no wrapping. The reason for this is that we're going to be applying random offsets to this 0 to 1 range to get our splatting effect, and we want each subregion or cell to be in the same 0 to 1 space so we can inspect the neighbor cells and get the same offsets. If that doesn't make sense just yet, hold on because it will become apparent very soon.